Hi, it's uh, Jeffrey Douglas with San Diego Rover. We're just finishing up the third night on the central coast of California in one of my favorite locations. So this is the final of the three uh, videos that I've done on the James Brood tent, rooftop tent. So first thing I want to tell you is uh, this is about the 10th trip out with the uh, tent. So we've had uh, enough time to really have the tent in desert locations, which were very hot. We've had it in Joshua Tree with some high winds. We've been on the coast. We've been in Yosemite National Park. Uh, so we've had different uh, venues. And so far the tent has really performed very well. We're very pleased with how it's performing. Uh, I am about six foot two. And if you're larger than I am, I would say that you probably look at the XXL version of the evasion because I am pretty much uh, top of my head to the tip of my toes, although I don't hit uh, and I can completely stretch out. In fact, uh, we can easily have two people and we often travel with two dogs, a small Jack Russell and a medium size uh, mixed dog. And we can get all of us up there plus a little bit of uh, clothes for the next day. So plenty of room. Uh, didn't want the XXL tent. It was way too wide for the Rover and just was too big. So I'm pretty pleased with the size that we have. Uh, one of the first thing I can tell you is if you're in an organized campsite, uh, you tend to get a lot of attention with the rooftop tent. Every time we've come into an organized camp, we'll have people come by and talk to us and want to know a lot about it. Uh, one of the things that um, I did get, uh, because we're not always sure of the levelness of where we're parking, is I went to Amazon. I got these uh, levelers, and they're stackable. Um, I like them a lot. You can stack two or three of them together, and you can level out the car pretty, pretty easily. It's got a handle that uh, ties it together, and I find them very, very, uh, very useful. Pretty compact. I'll put a link uh, below for our affiliate link to Amazon if you'd like to take a look at those, but I would cer certainly recommend those. So for the things that I like about the, the tent, first, um, I love the hard shell fiberglass fortified polyester shell. Uh, in fact, that was the first thing I was looking for. I, I just didn't want to have a soft sided rooftop tent, nothing wrong with those. But because we are often in the desert with higher winds and stuff, stuff like that, uh, the hard tent just appealed to me a lot more. I'd say the second thing that uh, really helped me in the decision, because this tent uh, was roughly around $4,000, was the fact that it does have a five-year warranty. So that does make me feel fairly good that if I have an issue with the shell or the mattress or the structure of the tent, I have five years um, under warranty. As far as putting the tent up and taking it down, I can tell you that it's gotten easier every trip. Um, we don't really struggle with it anymore. And literally I can say we can have the tent up or down probably in five minutes or less uh, with very little um, trouble at this point. We're just pretty good at it. Um, one thing I can say over a tent, uh, the location that we're in is absolutely running with uh, raccoons at night. So they're nocturnal and they come up in the nighttime. And uh, we were spending the first night just reading in the tent. You can hear them sniffing and scratching around the tent. So another benefit of the rooftop tent is, is you don't have that kind of uh, situation where you're on the ground, where there's rodents or things that are that close to you. Kind of a nice feeling. It just makes you sleep a little bit better. Obviously, we're not uh, not in an area that there's lions, tigers, and bears and things, but it's still kind of nice to be up uh, up in the air. It's also nice. It just feels like a little bit of a penthouse. So you open the windows up during the day, take a nap, and it really is very airy. Um, I've uh, been in uh, Anza Brega where it was quite hot. Opened all the windows, and it was really bearable. I was a little concerned uh, when we, we purchased the black version versus the white version, but I haven't really seen that much of an issue with that. Uh, so even in the desert, when it was hot, 
I don't think the black made that much difference from, from the white. Now, if you've watched uh, too many videos of the James Brown Brood, if you watch many videos of the James Brood tent, uh, one thing that a lot of people are a little bit upset about is the bed. And I can say that um, you're not going to get up there and, and uh, you know, get up on your knees and expect not to go through and feel the bottom of the, the tent, but the bed is, is reasonably comfortable. I don't have an issue with it, but what we did do is we bought um, the optional comfort pad, which is a little um, kind of a plastic thing that sits between the bottom of the tent and the bottom of the mattress and that really makes a difference in you going through and feeling uh, the bolts that secure obviously the, uh, the tent to the, uh, the rack below. So if you're considering the comfort pad I would really highly recommend it. The other thing it's supposed to do is give you some more ventilation between the bottom of the tent and the uh, mattress so there's some air circulation which is a good thing if you're in a moist environment or something like that. Um, obviously you want to be very careful uh, with this tent, uh, particularly if you close it up and you don't make sure it's aired out well. Uh, Moisture is not your friend in, in that situation. Living in San Diego it's not much of a problem, but if you were in a wetter climate um, I think you'd have to be pretty concerned about that. Um, for extreme weather um, performance, uh, we, we did go up uh, earlier this year to Joshua Tree. Uh, when we got up there late in the day, the wind was fairly high. I would guess it was probably in the 30 to 50 mile an hour gust range. I'll actually put a clip in here to show you what that felt like inside the uh, tent. And uh, while it didn't get to the point where I wanted to go ahead and put the tent away and get out our optional ground tent, um, I was pretty pleased with it. It seemed to hold up well, uh, nothing stressed. Uh, the struts that come out and lock up make it uh, pretty secure, but you could see from that uh, clip that I uh, just showed you that there was definitely some movement in the, in the structure as, uh, as the wind gusted. Uh, from from what James Brood says, uh, I believe they've tested this up to around 60 miles an hour uh, by actually taking it uh, down the road in a, on a car. Uh, that's obviously going to be a little bit easier um, than if you have gusting winds. Gusting winds are going to be the challenge. As I mentioned before, uh, we keep uh, the sleeping bags and the pillows up while we're traveling from um, site to site. No issues there. Also, no problem to put the ladder up there. Uh, I wouldn't put too much else up there, otherwise uh, trying to compress the tent and closing it down would be a bit of a challenge. But um, doesn't hear it, don't hear it rattling around or anything like that. Uh, because where we live, the garage is fairly low, we have to go ahead and unload the sleeping bag and stuff and, and take it back into the rover. Uh, but if you have uh, the ability to deploy the tent uh, where you're at, you could load it up and save quite a bit of interior space when you're, when you're traveling. So that's, um, that's kind of what I like. I think it's a, it's a good long list and I don't have anything else that I could tell you. As we uh, travel around some more, I'm sure we'll figure out some more things that we do like. Here's the things that I don't like so far. Nothing's a, a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination, but these are things that are kind of a mi minor annoyance and um, some things that I'm probably going to try to make some adjustments um, as we move forward.
So the things I don't like are the securing clips. There's four of them. There's two on the front of the James Baroud, and then there's two on the side. And those are clips that have uh, little knobs on each, or little buttons on each side that you have to compress to open up the, um, the clip. And they're difficult, um, particularly if you haven't opened the tent for a week or so or more. Uh, they tend to get a little bit uh, corroded, and I just don't like it too much. I've been told uh, that some people have taken the little buttons out and gone ahead and put in a cable lock instead. So I'm probably going to look at that at one point because that's one of the most frustrating things about the tent. Certainly not something that's a deal killer by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, I certainly do, do struggle with it, uh, particularly if your hands are cold. It's, um, it's kind of difficult to get those buttons in to clear the clip. So the second thing um, that I have a little bit of an issue is with the LED light that comes with the tent. Um, it has two uh, Velcro straps at the front of the tent that secure it up towards the top of the tent. And the light's fine, I don't have an issue with that, and it's deployed by a little single button, and that's okay too. But the charger for it is not a standard uh, USB or micro USB or any type of standard. It's got a proprietary um, plug that charges it, and I don't always have that with me. And uh, like this trip that we're on, I didn't bring the cord, and so the light is now dead, so I'm not, be, not able to use it. I'd say that the third thing is the three doors. There's two on the sides, and then there's one on the back of the tent. The lower portion is secured by Velcro. And I'm assuming the reason they do that, although I still think that if I had it to do, I would prefer to have a zipper there, um, but they've gone ahead and put in a, a Velcro strip. So um, I'm assuming that's the, the design and it's gotten easier. There are two little uh, tabs that come down with Velcro on them. And so if you'll uh, connect those, you'll roll up the do door about a third of the way and connect it up to the top. Uh, it keeps the doors open and it does make the uh, tent a lot easier to take down. The other gripe I have is uh, the Velcro is, is super noisy. And so if you're at a campground and you're, you're next to some people, uh, they're going to know every single time you get in and out of the tent, uh, particularly if you're getting out of the tent late in uh, nighttime to maybe make a bathroom run or anything. I guess the only other um, pet peeve I have is there on the front of the tent there's a really super handy front pocket that's got two pockets in it and it's a perfect fit for keys and, and phones and stuff like that. I wish they'd um, put a couple more of those in and also I wish they would have uh, some solution for uh, shoes. Uh, obviously if you bring the shoes up into the tent uh, it'd be a nice to, what we do right now is we bring a paper trash bag up with us, but it um, would be nice to have something to hang them up. There is a rack above that hangs on the ceiling that's uh, useful for small light items like uh, uh, jackets or hats, but you don't want to put a great deal of weight in there because um, it, uh, it's doesn't, uh, it sags down pretty far. So it's just really just for those minor things. Uh, by the way, one uh, trick that we've found is um, often when we leave on trips, we go to iTunes and, and download a bunch of movies onto the iPad. And if you're very careful, you can clip the iPad into the mesh, um, ceiling mesh, and it uh, hangs down and it kind of makes a perfect uh, screen for watching the movies. So I like that a lot. And I actually use the iPad Pro, the big one, so it holds it, uh, holds it just fine. Uh, one other thing I'll tell you of a more personal um, nature, because this is something I was really super concerned at, about when I bought the tent, was getting in and out of the tent, particularly at night if you had to go to the restroom. 
and um, it is a bit of a bother. It's, uh, it's a bit dangerous to get out of the tent at night. Um, the ladder does tend to shift occasionally if the car shifts, and if you don't uh, watch it, you could come tumbling out of there. So I, I hate to admit this on, uh, on, on video, but I'm hoping this will be useful for somebody out there. I do keep a pee bottle up in the, in the tent uh, tucked at the bottom. And uh, again, I'm six foot two. I can uh, get onto my knees and e utilize that. So it's made it a lot more pleasurable. Don't have to get down and risk uh, falling in the middle of the night or putting my shoes on and getting dressed to come down, uh, to, come down to, to use the restroom. So thought you might want to know that. Um, now you know more than you probably want to know. Finally, um, depending on how you mount the James Brood tent, um, you're going to have to expect some road noise, and you also are probably going to have to expect a little bit of difference in your mileage. Now for me with the LR4, uh, what we did was we mounted the uh, James Brood on a front runner outfitter rack, and um, it's up a little bit higher than I would like. So we had to kind of jury rig the, um, the uh, setup because what you'll want to have with the James Brood is two bars that run um, horizontally, that run across the, the width of the, uh, the tent that has support for the whole width. And so we had to do that uh, using some parts. Uh, front runner doesn't have anything specific at the time of the filming for this, um, this. So it does have some wind, wind noise. Um, it certainly is noticeable. I personally leave the tent on. It uh, would be a very difficult thing to take it on and off, although I do know that Front Runner does have some fast release clips that if I did get a garage, I might look at doing that so I could take the tent off um, You know, when I wasn't uh, using it. Uh, in its current configuration, I'm just under eight feet, uh, so I can get into most public parking garages, which tend to be eight feet, two inches. But it's something you'll want to keep, uh, keep your mind uh, alert to. I think it's about 13 and a half inches um, at the thickest point when the tent is closed. So I guess the big question is, would I buy it again? Um, Yes, I think I would. I, you know, we brought a tent with us this time, and I, I remember the tent was a bigger deal than it really is. The tent's not that difficult to, to pitch and put up. Uh, the benefit to the rooftop tent is you can basically pull in in the middle of the night, uh, deploy the tent, don't have to worry too much about a flat area, don't have to worry if it's raining or it's you're in a muddy situation like that. So that's where um, the rooftop tent really does make a huge difference. Um, I like sleeping in it a lot. Uh, it does sleep really well. It's very, very comfortable. Um, it's a little bit cramped, so it takes a little bit of time to get used to it. But once you're used to it, it's really quite cozy. Um, overall, I'm very satisfied with the quality. I'm very satisfied with the value of the tent. I think as expensive it is, as it is, uh, I find in life um, if you'll buy something of quality, uh, it's going to cost some more, but the value is going to be there and I expect to get many, many years of use from this tent. It's uh, wearing really well, no, no issues so far. I don't see anything that's, uh, that's a problem. Uh, durability, again, I think it's very durable. Uh, the fabric that they use on the sidings is a really uh, strong fabric. The zippers are really super high quality. The stitching is high quality. Um, everything in the tent is of, of very, very good quality. Uh, one of the things with James Brood is it's really difficult to get much information about them on their website. They don't have very many pictures. They don't have very many specifications. They don't have much in the way of material of how to mount it and things like that. So that was another motivation for me to do these videos to get some more information from a real world perspective out to, out to you. Um, as far as uh, mileage goes, uh, the LR4 that I have has a big uh, V8. It's a Jaguar engine. 
doesn't seem to make a bit of difference in the mileage. If your car is uh, not a powerful car, I would expect you probably would see some degradation depending on how you mount it in your mileage. So I hope that that's helpful. If you have any specific questions, you can certainly pop them in uh, the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And please remember, get outside and enjoy the day. Thanks so much, and this is Jeffrey Douglas of San Diego Rover, and I hope you're having a wonderful day.